Welcome to Generation Impact Bible College tonight. It's so awesome to be able to meet with you guys once again, to be able to share the Word of God and to be able to just spend time together. That's an amazing time. So while people are busy logging on and while people are getting ready to just settle down, get a cup of coffee, uh, we are on topic number 208. And uh, we will be, the title for this particular evening is the church or the seven churches in the Revelation. Okay, so we're going to be specifically looking at chapter two and chapter three of the book of Revelation as we go through these seven churches that uh, is spoken about in this revelation of Christ. So before we do that, let's just commit this time to the Lord in prayer tonight and let's just trust Him and believe Him for an awesome, majestic, powerful evening as we come together to share his word father we just bless you for this evening we bless you for this opportunity my god to be able to once again come together and to just share that which we have found your word lord to be able to expound it father to be able to receive the edification and exhortation that your word always provides lord we thank you even tonight as this word goes forth it will not return void but it will accomplish Absolutely everything it's sent out to do, my God. So Lord, tonight I pray that the communication will be clear and direct. And Father God, the hearers' ears will be open to receive that which the Spirit has, my Lord. And Father God, tonight we commit this time into your hands. We ask you to have your way. We ask you to, to have your will established and done in Jesus' name. So we give you all the glory, honor, and praise in advance for everything that will accomplish this evening in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome to those that are signing up. Awesome to have you with us this evening. My name is Pastor Leslie Hessel. You have joined Generation Impact Bible College. And we are on topic number 208, the seven churches in Revelation. So we're going to go through that. It's quite a bit of material to cover tonight. So uh, let's not waste too much time and let's get into the Word of God. I'm sure more people will join us as we go along. So the second chapter then of the book of Revelation starts out in verse 1. And it says to the angel of the church of Ephesus, right. Now just to give you a bit of context and background quickly. In chapter 1, there was um, the introduction into the book of Revelation. We know it's a book about the revelation of Christ. And uh, we do understand that uh, already John had a picture of Christ when he saw him. And he saw him standing between seven lampstands and he saw the seven stars. And the number seven you'll find is very prominent in the, in the book of Revelation. And then he talks about the first couple of chapters speaking specifically about the seven churches that we are going to be discussing tonight. So, this, um, so then in chapter 2 verse 1 says, To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, these things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands, basically referring to chapter 1. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars, and you have persevered, and have patience, and have labored for my name's sake, and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you. That you have left your first love. Remember, therefore from the, where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. But this you have, that you have hate the, de that you hate the deeds of Nicol Nicolotian, Nicolation, sorry, which, are also which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So there's, there's a picture of the first of the first church. Church is called the Church of Ephesus. And uh, we're just going to focus on a couple of aspects um, regarding these particular churches. We do not have, uh, I don't want to spend too much time on each church, so otherwise we're going to run out of time before we get through all seven. But um, I wanted to take a couple of notes. The commendations that were given to this particular church um, in this chapter of Scripture it talks about its patience, it hates the deeds of false teachers, and it did not faint or give up. All right, so there you've got three commendations that are already spoken of about this particular church. There are more in here, but those are the three main ones. Now, the reproof or the thing that um, Jesus says he did not enjoy, he did not like, was the fact that they left their first love. Now, that is something that we see in many Christians, many believers, even today. So this church, we can see these things manifest in the body of Christ 
even today. There are people that comply or show the same commendations or will have the same commendations and there's the same lack or reef proof that comes into their life. So in this case, they lack their first love. Now many times believers, when they first come to Christ, they accept Christ, they become excited about their, their salvation, they're really on fire for God, they do mighty exploits and deeds for Him, but then due to the uh, circumstances, the, uh, the, 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 the different onslaughts of life, um, circumstances, situations, things that happen to them, they lose their zeal, they lose their excitement, and they lose their first love. And then the, 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 the reproof or the counsel that is given to them in this particular chapter is that they, or this particular church, is that they must repent from that and return to their first love. So the message for you and I then in these days is that we need to stay excited about the things of the Lord. We cannot allow that fire that burns inside of us to be quenched and to be calmed down. We need to stay on fire for God to be able to do the mighty exploits and deeds for Him. You need to stir up that which is in you. You need to uh, get into the Word of God. Spend time in prayer. Uh, build your relationship with Him. Stay on fire for God and allow that to grow within you. Then we see the second church. And it says to the angels of the church of Smyrna, write this. These things says the first and the last, he who was dead and came to life. I know your works, tribulation and poverty. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested and you will be of tribulation ten days. Be faithful until death. And I will give you the crown of life. You as an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. So in this particular one, we see that there is the main features of persecution, the martyrdom of the, and suffering of this particular church. The commendations that are brought to this particular church is that they are rich in faith and good works. And in spite of the tribulation and the hypocrisies, and hypocrites that they come across and deal have to deal with. The reproof, there is none. There is nothing that's actually brought against this church. And you'll find that out of the seven, there's only two that don't actually have the reproof. This is one of them. Where they have been encouraged, there's commendations about the church, but there, ain't, there is no reproof. The counsel that was given unto them to be faithful, even unto death. So it doesn't matter how much persecution, how much, uh, what onslaughts, what attacks, what persecution they go through. They need to be faithful unto death. Now, even we seeing that today, even in the world that we are in, that we are faced with all kinds of issues and things, pandemics, uh, we're coming against uh, the, the onslaught of the devil one, of the, of the evil one, even in conduct of officials and people in government and places like that, not even uh, in various nations is being manifested and shown. And there's, there, there's a need for the body of Christ to stand up and to be strong in these hours. And therefore, even here and right now, they, we are reminded of the standards and the, and the, and the values and, and all the beliefs that are established in the Word of God that, that we are encouraged to, to live according to and to live and to comply with, so to speak. And even as we are faithful to God and faithful to His Word and faithful to the principles that the Word of God teaches, we need to learn to be faithful even unto death. That is what this particular church was strong in. And this church was able to even do that. Then the third one is the church at Pergamos. And it says unto the angel of the church of Pergamos write. These things says, he's a, says he who has the sharp two-edged sword. I know your works and where you dwell. Where Satan's throne is. And you all fast my, to my name. And did not deny my faith even the days in which Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was killed among you where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you, because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit sexual immorality. Thus you also have those who hold the doctrine of Nicolaitans, which, I, which thing I hate. Repent! Or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat, and I will give him a white stone, 
And on the stone, a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. Now, in this particular church, which is the church of Pergamos, which is the third one, the main feature is a state of religious compromise. It's where they find themselves. But even in that, the commendations that are brought to them, they held firm to the Jesus' name and did not deny the faith of God. Reproof, the tolerance of the Nicolaitans, Balazim, compromise, adultery, and immorality. And the bottom line was they need to repent of the things that they were doing that were not godly or of God. A lot of influences are coming their way, Balaam, Balak, and also Nicolaitan, Nicolaitans. And uh, we need to understand that those things we need to come against and work against. And that cannot, we cannot stand against or, or allow them to come in and taint us and to become part of our lifestyle and who we are. So the Pergamos church then had this challenge that they need to repent and that they need to come to a pure relationship before God once again. There we've got the church of Theatira. And it says, And to the angel of the church in Theatira write, these things says the Lord of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like fine brass. Amazing in these, in, in these um, different churches, what they emphasized of that vision of Christ himself. The sword in his mouth, the flaming eyes, um, all the different aspects of Christ that they were br bringing out and, uh, and emphasizing. It's worth a study even just to go through that and to, uh, and to see how how they portray and show Christ in every single one of these churches. But it says then, <clears throat> these things says the Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like fine brass. I know your works, love, service, faith, and your patience. And as for your works, the last one more are more than the first. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. Because you allow that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. And I give her time, I, and I gave her time to repent for sexual immorality and she did not repent. Indeed, I will cast her into a sickbed and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation. Unless they repent of their deeds, I will kill her children with death and all the churches shall know that I am you. I am he who searches the minds and the hearts. And I will give to each one of you according to your works. Now to you I say, and to the rest in Theatara, as many as I do not have this doctrine, who have not known the depths of Satan, as they say, I'll put you no uh, sorry, I'll put on you no other burden. But hold fast what you have till I come. And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end to him I will give power over the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. He shall be dashed to, they shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessels. As I also have received from my father, and I will give him the morning star. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, in that particular church, which is the church of the Atara, which is the fourth one. In that particular church, the main feature is the dark ages and the apostasy that they, they were in. Their commendation was speaking about their love, their faith, their patience, their good works, all those things they did. And they even went as far as to say that the good works have actually increased. Now, we know that Christ himself did mighty and powerful good works. And he used that as a means to actually uh, penetrate communities so that he could actually bring the good news of the gospel and be able to, to minister into those people's lives. But then it says the reproof against this particular church was the tolerance and the accommodation of Jezebel. Now, in today's world, in the life we find ourselves, we can even see the manifestation of the spirit of Jezebel, even amongst the churches, even today. And as that spirit of Jezebel, adultery, which manifests specifically adultery and immortality, uh, immorality, sorry, um, those things are so evident, so part of what the church is doing today, that we have to come to a place that we actually purify and clean the church. So what it then says, the council, is you've got to deal with that spirit. You've got to hold fast what you already have and what you already believe. You cannot allow that spirit to come in and destroy what is, what is, um, what is of God. Now you need to, you can even go and study. There's a whole, obviously a whole teaching around uh, the spirit of Jezebel and how she penetrates the church and how 
fear came amongst men of God and how there was uh, one specific one or prophet would not was 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 fearful of her, hid from her, um, even though he was a great man of God and performed mighty miracles, could not could not deal with with that particular um, deception and, and, and immorality and stuff like that. So then we go on to the fifth church. Now the fifth church we find in the book of um, in the book sorry in chapter three. And in chapter 3 it says, and this is the church of Sardis, and it says to the angel of the church in Sardis, write, These things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain, that are ready to die. For I have not found your works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come up upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. You have a few names. Even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He was not here, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, in this particular church, this church of Sardis, we see the main uh, feature again is the transformation and the change. We also see the commendation to them is that there are some of them that are not defiled. That some of them that have been able to keep themselves pure and be able to be able to come before God and, and protect that which they have. The reproof that they had was dead works. And you'll see that in verse 2, says, um, sorry, at the end of verse uh, 1, which is, I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. All right. So therefore, a lot of the stuff that they were doing, a lot of the things that they were performing were actually just dead works. There was no life in the word of God that they brought and delivered and spoke to the people. All right. And because of that, the Bible then says that they need to watch, strengthen what remains, hold fast, and then repent. Obviously, from all the, the dead works and absolutely everything else that they were doing. All right. So, again, they're talking about the repentance that needs to come through and that they need to deal with. All right. So, then we go on and we look at um, the next church, which is the church of Philadelphia. And this you'll see in verse 7. And it talks about and says to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, right. It says, these things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it for you have a little strength, have kept my word and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan say that they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet. And to know what I and to know that I have loved you, because you have kept my commandment to persevere, I will. All, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world, to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am I'm coming quickly. Behold, fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes out of heaven from my God. And I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, this particular church is an amazing one because this is the only one amongst the seven that had zero reproof. Okay, so in other words, there's nothing that, God, that the, the Jesus took and actually spoke about this particular church in Philadelphia as being, being incorrect. The commendation he brought to them was that they kept the word and they did not deny Jesus. All right. So they were focused and their first love remained. They were strong in serving God. They were purposeful, purpose driven to be able to do the things that need to be done. So in their, in their lives, they, the main feature was revival and spreading the word of God amongst the people. It is an amazing um, uh, observation to see that this particular church was also the church that would not go through 
um, the, the persecution of or trials of a tribulation, but they will be taken out and they will not suffer that. And uh, as I mentioned earlier on, all of these churches represent, I believe all of them together actually represents the, the, what's in the body of Christ even today, what we experience today, because every one of these, doesn't matter which one they are, they will, you will see some of them manifest even right now in the church of God today. So if you look at that, you, you'll now see that there's a need amongst the body of Christ to develop a, um, an attitude and a lifestyle similar to what the Philadelphia church had. Because it's that lifestyle, it's that way of living, it's that way of conducting yourself, it's that way of preparing yourself, it is that um, desire to see the word of God fulfilled and to develop the relationships amongst the body of Christ that will keep you in a, in a strong place and be able to do the things that, that satisfy God. So this is the second church then that had absolutely no reproof against it. The first one, remember, was Smyrna, the second church we spoke about, and this one in Philadelphia was a similar situation to that. The amazing thing is that both of them had a bit of a missionary attitude in this, in the, in the, what they did. They went out and did a lot of work amongst the people and spread the gospel and spread the good news of Christ amongst the people. That was some of the commonality between those two particular churches. Um, although Smyrna was seen as being a persecuted church, um, and this one, Philadelphia, was seen as a missionary church, they both had that, that drive to be able to go out and to be able to do that. Then the last one the, uh, is the church at Laodicea, uh, and it says on the verse 14, if we go there, it says, And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth, because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need for nothing. And do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This particular church of the Laodiceans reflects the modern church, very much what we, where we find ourselves today. And this particular church had zero commendations to it. It's the only church amongst all seven of them that had no commendation whatsoever. So here you've got a church that is sitting here and there's nothing good to say about this church. And this church, the big thing was that they had no, they were seen as lukewarm, neither hot nor cold. There was nothing in what they did that was of, of any major value. So the, the um, reproof was the fact that they were lukewarm, they were spiritually poor, they were blind, they were naked, and they did not know it. All right. So the thing is, although they were in that state, they did not even recognize the state in which they were. They were so focused on self-gratification, um, on self-preservation, on looking after me, me, I, and us. It was all that made uh, was of any uh, importance to them. And they did not pursue the things of God. They did not know the heart of God. They did not uh, pursue the kingdom of God. They did not push through in the things of the Lord. And the counsel to them was quite an interesting one. Because it was told to them to buy gold tried in fire. So in this particular passage, the counsel that says in verse 18, I counsel you to buy from me, Jesus speaking, 
gold refined in the fire. So go to, so that for you and I, it is possible to go to God and actually from Jesus buy gold from Him that's refined, refined in the heavenly fires that we could actually acquire that for self. And then from there, it talks about the fact that we need to then also receive or get hold of white raiment. We need to get clothed, by right, clothed in righteousness. Um, we need to walk in the goodness of God. We know we need to walk in everything that God has already provided for us and given to us through His Son, Jesus. And we need to also, um, the I self, we need to be zealous. And then obviously, last but not least, we need to repent. So there's quite a few of these churches, the three or four of them, that were spoken about repentance. Okay. Repentance is something that we need to understand. It's not a once-off exercise. All right? There are many believers even today that are watering the gospel down. And they say, you know, you can, you can repent when you come born again. You come into the kingdom of God and that's good enough. No, it's not good enough. Whenever we fall short, we need to come to God with a heart of forgiveness. A God of a heart of repentance. Turn away. Repentance does not mean... Uh, uh, sorry, repentance means turn away from the way you, you did things before. 180 degrees. Go in the opposite direction. Don't do that. So whenever the Holy Spirit of God reveals to you things that are not um, well pleasing unto Him, things that are not satisfying Him, it's at that moment that you and I need to respond to that unction and we need to repent. And in many of these churches, I think it's four, four, about four, four, five of them, that actually talks about the fact that they need to repent. Turn away from what you're doing. Don't carry on doing what you're doing. That is the growth that you and I then develop as as the body of Christ, as a, as a child of God, as somebody who follows in the steps of Jesus, somebody that's a disciple, a small, a small Christ, in other words. And we follow Him in everything that we do. And as we do that, we, we live a life to become more like Him. And in all these churches, the whole thrust is to become more like Jesus every single day. Turn away from that lifestyle, turn away from doing what is not good, and follow Him. So here in the Laodicean church then, no commendations whatsoever. Nothing in this church, the modern day church, that was pleasing unto God. In the reproof, there was plenty. There was plenty of things that are lukewarm, spiritually poor, and uh, blind and naked. And we need to understand that lukewarmness in the sight of God is something that He does not take much pleasure in. Okay, And lukewarmness means neither cold, neither hot. In other words, there's, there's no zeal, there's no fire, there's no... No nothing that is driving that person into doing the things that need to be done for Christ. And we need to keep that in, in our hearts and minds and understand that we need to live that life in Him. So in the notes you're going to find there's a table that you can go through that gives you more information like the meaning of the names of the churches. Ephesus means uh, first or desirable. Smyrna means myrrh or sweet fragrance. Uh, Pegam, uh, Pergamos means height, power or elevation. Um, then it talks about the Atara, which is sweet savor labor uh, or a sacrifice of, of, of contrition. Uh, Sardis, the church of Sardis, those escaping or that which, or that which remains. Um, Philadelphia, brotherly love. All right. And Laodicea, judging the people for a just people. All right. So you can go through the notes and it gives you a, b a bit more information on in a table format of what is what is going on. Then you'll find in the notes also um, the redemption in Jesus Christ, the new blood covenant. And it talks and it puts these churches into a context that follows a, a path through that. Um, you can look at the table. I'm not going to go through that right now because it's, it's really self-explanatory. And it goes through and just shows you um, the different churches and, um, and how it went through and how it comes right through to the... Uh, Right to until Jesus' time and obviously right to the end when Christ returns. There's two terms in here that they refer to, which is uh, uh, monogism and also synergism. And uh, really those two terms, and for those that don't know, monogism is basically meaning that the, the work of salvation is 100% uh, God. Okay, And uh, everything that, that allows us to be born again is God-inspired. Um, then the synergism talks about a, a, a working together. In other words... God brings grace and we bring faith and our faith and the work together, the synergism basically brings us into a salvation experience. Um, you can go through that and have a look at it and uh, it shows you how the different churches um, over a timeline 
how the different churches fit into from the, the apostolic church, which is obviously the first church, the church of Ephesus, right through to the Laodicean church, which is the final one. And also talks about how all that, where that, where you land up with that. And then also talks about the restoration, ultimately the rapture, which is obviously covered in the book of Revelation as well. So you'll find all of that in there and uh, you'll be able to go through that and understand. So um, the seven churches, obviously there's a lot more in the scripture about it. So we can spend a lot of time going through some of these things, but I think we hit the, the for this particular topic, we just wanted to hit the gist of what was or is the things that were held against each one of these churches and then what was the, the what were they commended on what was actually you know what what was uh, Jesus um, what did he like about this church what didn't he like about that church and then what did they do to rec- what did they have to do to rectify it because in every case for every church that's exactly what was happening then he basically also highlighted to them as I said, was something that we did not go through in the notes is, is uh, the different images of Jesus in each one of the churches. You also saw the rewards in each church, which is right at the end, that which is which was given to them. And it also speaks about the fact that um, for every one of them, there's, there's a reward. Very interesting one as well was that if you looked at the Mission Church of Philadelphia, uh, it spoke about the Book of Life, which is also very interesting that you know, your, your name will be secure in the book of life and will not lose your name out of it. Um, and that was quite an interesting comment. And the question then you have is, does it mean that the other uh, six churches, that there was a chance that your name could be taken out of the book of life? Um, so there, there's those things that, that can be looked at and studied and um, can learn through that. So I hope you learned something there tonight with this particular um Topic and uh, uh, Pastor Pani will be on shortly with the, the last one for the evening. I hope you learned something. Let's just close this time that we've had together with the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to have gone through your word, Father God, to look at the seven churches. Although it might be brief, Father, we looked at the, the main topics or the main thrust of those seven churches in the book of Revelation. And Father, I pray that even tonight as we reflect on that and we study that, Lord, that we apply it to our own lives and see where do we stand? Are we reflecting or showing what is manifest in one or two or three of these churches, maybe even our own lives, Lord? And Father, we come to you tonight and we repent. If there's lukewarmness in our lives, Father God, if there's compromise in our lives, if there's uh, submitting or allowing the spirit of Jezebel into our lives in some form or the other, Lord, that we will repent from that tonight and that we will come to a place where we can stand pure before you, Father God, to be able to be the vessel that you want us to be, to be able to flow through us, to touch this world, my God, that your kingdom be established, that your will be established, that your will be done in Jesus' name. So, Father God, even as we reflected on these churches tonight, Lord, we pray that even in our own lives, we will deal with it and we will not allow it to, to, to manifest and stay. So, Father, we ask you that by your Holy Spirit, you will reveal it to us so that we might be able to do the repenting, Father God, that we might be able to stand in right standing with you. So, we give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise for everything that is accomplished and done in this uh, session in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord richly bless you. Uh, Pastor Connie will be on shortly. Amen.